We'll be live in a second. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Wherever you are, welcome to Dumb SEO Questions, episode 413. Uh, each week uh, we meet here to uh, review the questions asked and answered uh, on the uh, Dumb SEO Questions Facebook group. With us today, we have Tim Kappa. Tim is uh, a CEO of OnlineOwnership.com. Uh, he is uh, based uh, about 100 miles north of London uh, in Corby. Um, he uh, uh, is, uh, his agency uh, uh, was recently awarded the um, best um, local search agency uh, in uh, Middle Earth, is it, I think? Anyway, and um, Tim also was uh, noted uh, in the top 200 uh, uh, S -S SEOs um, uh, around the world. And uh, also we have Masataki Wasa. Oh, it's, Tim is also a, a, a Google um, a product expert uh, in the, the Google My Business community. Masataki is a Google product expert in the AdSense uh, community. Um, Masataki is based in London, uh, in the suburb of Wimbledon. Um, he uh, is webmaster of wasaweb.net, W-A-S-A-W-E-B.net. And David Razam is a leading internet marketer. He's uh, down in the sunny south of, of the UK. Um, uh, David uh, is, um, or can be found at uh, um, davidrosam.com. Okay, um, let me see. We've got uh, only four questions tonight. Uh, let's let's look at them anyway. This the first one was from Melinda Holsell. Um and her question was: Will HTTPS wipe out all of the data I have available under uh, HTTP. Spoiler alert, no. Um, I just uh, discovered my domain property is set up as HTTP, not HTTPS, uh, in the Google Search Console. Does anyone have experience in setting up a new property as HTTPS? If I do this, will I wipe out all of the data I have available under HTTP? Thanks. Simple answer, you can just add HTTPS to, to Google Search Console. You can also add www uh, in both HTTP and HTTPS to it. And you can check what's going on under each of those, um, those settings. So go ahead and do it. Oh, I should meant to share my uh, desktop. What a deal I am. You guys should tell me when I do something stupid. Um, <laughs> we'll right, be doing it um, all afternoon, Jim. Oh, sorry. <laughs> it's too onerous, David. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, okay, so uh, let's have a look at number two on our list. This one is from um, Lise Ben Morpa. Um, how long is it does it take um, for my site to rank on Google? Uh, Lise Ben said, "Hi everyone, I'm new to the group. I've just done a one-page uh, um, search engine optimization, and all is looking super. I must say. Now my question is, how long does it take for my site?" Uh, to rank on uh, Google. Can I say it depends? Of course you can. <laughs> I, 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 it depends. Um, I think we were set upon by uh, 
a few people who decided to troll us. Um, well, in my opinion, anyway, it just seemed that way. Yeah. Um, but uh, Perry Bernard um, answered them nicely, I thought. Yes, I, I, I agree with Perry. Um, what Perry says, um, and it also depends on what rank on Google means to Lesbian. Um, are you asking rank on page one for Google? Uh, are you asking for Google to uh, to um, to spider your site and uh, make sense of it and put you on page five hundred and nine? Um, rank on Google um, and what for? Um, so yes. Um, Perry's uh, answer of between five minutes and never applies. Um, you need to do more. If, if this is a serious question, uh, you need to do more than uh, do one page and make it look nice. You need to put some very decent content on there. And you probably need a lot more than one page to get anywhere with your website. Uh, but again, it depends what rank on Google, Google means and what the expectations are behind rank on Google. Exactly. Thank you. Thank you, David. And anybody else? Okay, let's go to number three on our own list. This one from Livia Hanganu. Uh, is it possible to uh, use uh, search engine optimization to work on an FAQ, Frequently Asked Questions page. Um, Livio said, hello, I'm the owner of an educational blog for the Romanian people living in the UK. Um, I'm writing content in Romanian about driving uh, in the UK. Um, laws, news and uh, guides. Um, I also have the, the biggest group of Romanian drivers uh, in the UK where people can ask uh, all sorts of questions. Uh, some of them I have answered already through my blog posts and some of them not. Uh, I'm trying to find a way where people can find short answers on my website. So I thought of an FAQ page. Uh, the problem is I don't know what impact uh, this will have uh, and if it's worth the work I'm going to put in. I imagine I'll have hundreds of questions and answers uh, on one page uh, only. My questions are, uh, is it um, possible to actually use uh, search engine optimization uh, to work on a frequently answered questions page uh, so I can get organic traffic? And given that, uh, number two is, uh, given that I already have uh, some organic traffic on my posts, Will an FAQ page steal some of that traffic? Um, and given that the keywords um, will um, repeat. And three, uh, off topic, is there a specialized WordPress plugin to build this page or will I have to use Rank Map? Now I'm confused. Um, is it okay, um, search engine optimization wise, to have maybe 200 to 300 questions and answers on the same page or should i group them in four or five pages thanks for your time yeah so so look no if faq pages are good um so, and, and Brenda uh, talked about marking them up um, with schema, which, yeah, fine. Uh, the only problem I have now with FAQ um, uh, marking them up is that you actually, if you're, like, like you've already said, your answers are pretty short. So like someone will have the question and your answers are quite short. Um, 
which means if you mark them up with um, FAQ schema, um, they are literally going to see the uh, result in, uh, or they go to literally see the entire answer in the FAQ, um, in, in, you know, with the structured data in the search result, which means they don't click through to your site. Um, if it's a longer, more in-depth article, then yes, the user will tend to click through to read the rest of it. Problem is, is if they just short succinct, people don't click through. Um, and so as a result, over the years, because you know, um, most SEOs were marking that up before it became fashionable. Um, as a result, now, um, over the years of actually seeing the results of this, I don't actually mark up um, clients' FAQs that are succinct. Things that are more in-depth, yeah, for sure. But things that are single question answers, results you just they don't display the bloody answers also you see where people then don't bother going through now next bit you got two to three hundred of these um oh, uh, oh sorry and the other thing is um the other part of your thing was will it steal traffic because i've already answered these in a similar fashion already on site so in that instance what i would do is separate out your, like you said, two to 400 FAQs. I would split them out into, into this. I would separate them out into the ones where, for example, you say you've already answered, but not the exact question in a blog article on your site. And then see, right, if this article actually has four or five more relevant related questions to it. And then actually add those four or five questions to that actual um, page, because it makes sense more there. Plus you'll also benefit from more of an understanding and people to that page when Google with, sees those in the more understanding of way that they are actually worded or phrased. The other way, if you didn't want to do that, the other way is, yes, I would certainly split those out by kind of categories, in a sense. Um, work, visas, driving, I don't know, licenses maybe, or whatever the case may be. I would try and split that three or 400 up um, into at least some more manageable kind of understanding of it, uh, uh, certainly because they're all going to be different. They're all going to be crossing over into slightly different things. I would try and split them up. If you were going to do, let's say, three or four, I'd probably try and do three or four, at least, uh, particularly pertinent. Um, but I would, if you, you know, like your first question was, is it going to steal traffic? Well, if you've got one, if you've got one article going, how to walk a dog, and then you've got a question and answers, you know, page on can I walk a dog or whatever. Yeah, they are going to overlap. Um, so that's why I suggest look at your site. I mean, only you can make a decision on that. But if you've got questions that you've already answered, I would try and add additional FAQs to that page. It may only be four or five. But at least you're working through your site where you've answered questions which are pretty much the same and you can add additional FAQs to the bottom of that page for the user. Um, or alternatively, you must at least split them up into, into themes or like or categories or whatever the theme may be specifically. There's, yeah, you shouldn't do one page with two to 400 FAQs on. And it's entirely up to you. You can mark it up and check it out, how it looks in search results uh, with FAQ schema. But if they succinct small question answers, in my total honesty, you, you will lose traffic because then people 
will just read it straight in the search engine they've had their answer they don't need to click through to you excellent tim uh, anybody else um not very much to add and maybe not even adding um just just to re-emphasize the the thoughts about um these two to three hundred questions being on one page yes split them up it's going to be a god awful user experience having them all on one page um if people are going to um read it and stay with you and like your site um don't get them scrolling through two or three hundred questions on one one page um work out what the themes are um you know, find, make as many pages as make it easy for people to find the answers. Um, I would say. Um, just just work out what what the themes are and assign them a page each. Not a page each for the questions, but a page each for the themes. Um, so yeah, that's uh, otherwise. Um, I don't think I have anything at all to add. <laughs> Thank you, David. Okay, let's um, move on to number four on our run list. And it's a question from Alexandru Tudor. Um, that's the interesting question. What are the first steps uh, that you need to do for creating a blog uh, search engine optimization ready? Does he mean like an article or a, a, a blog? Like, is it a, like, uh, I don't, like, creating a blog, is that creating a blog post, creating a blog, is it a blog section or a news section on the site, is it a standalone, just a blog? <coughs> yeah, I don't know, now you've got us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I hadn't thought about that. I, I like the way, well, the, uh, so many people just like people refer to an article now as a blog. Yeah. Like, is it the article? Is it the blog section that's on a site? Is it a standalone freaking blog? Aye, uh, aye, uh. Yeah, maybe, I, uh, maybe if we answer it all of the above. <laughs> <laughs> When I read it, I thought it was standalone, but that was just me. Yeah, I was going to say that, um, that I, I was thinking that this was a blog, you know, a, a blog, a website. Um, well, you might well be right. Tim. I mean, <laughs> Christ, I look, it, no, nothing, nothing's our SEO ready in that sense. Like, I mean, there are WordPress templates out there which are actual just blog templates for WordPress, which are pretty much SEO ready. They built they built essentially for um, obviously fast, easy to use, um, um, and also have because 99% of the time a blog is also going to be monetized it also has the built-in on the side yeah. you know little widgets for your affiliates that you're going to use or advertisers and things like that uh, um pretty slick pretty fast they they updated their premiums you know i think you pay 50 odd bucks for it um or you could just freaking go with something straight off the box that you just create i mean pretty much anything that you buy in terms of like any even freemium uh blogs are pretty much off the bat they're ready to go it's it's like anything you need to then work it out for yourself in terms of how am i going to do this am i going to just uh, articles am i going to categorize this is my blog going to have categories do I want those categories because it's just a blog? Should I have my categories as actual navigation or not? Or do I want people just to scroll through an unlimited amount of articles? If it's a blog, how should I categorize it up? 
Should I colorize it? Should they be in the nav? Should I have nav ready done? How are people going to read this? How am I going to use tags? Am I going to select four categories within this blog like that I want to kind of my mind write about? And then should I use tags to super define those categories? Like, let's say picking four categories and with each category, there's going to be super defined four specific niche tags in there uh, where, where we're also going to work on stuff. Um, uh, should 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 the categories or should the tags be in the drop down? How do you define it for the user? Like, so this is the thing. There's no there's no thing that's already. Um, you need to decide on how the user is going to come to your site and how they're going to interact. What the aim of your blog is. Like, surely you must have an aim of the blog. Even local, like little local parish council blogs have an aim of it. Um, you know, it's to sign up for this or to 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 help donate money for the new flipping church roof. Everything has a name, so you need to decide what it is, and then you're going to decide how the users are going to use it and, and 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 what the aim is, and then you can go out there and look for whether you're going to look for a you know a freemium sort of. CMS, are you going to go and look at something more custom? Are you going to have a custom built? Like, there's no such thing as SEO ready. Um, I'm, I'm sorry, mate. Yeah, and isn't the danger of overthinking about SEO when you start? I mean, again, it depends totally. on what. Kind of, totally, totally. It depends on what kind of blog um, yeah. Yeah, Alexandru is talking about. As well, I mean, are you talking about sort of personal hobby blog? Are you talking about sort of you know your business blog? You, you're trying to um, drum up custom for your business, so it's very difficult to generalize. And but at the same time, I think it really is important that if you're going to blog, start it uh, rather than trying to overthink about SEO in the first instance. Mm. Mm. Yeah, totally. I mean, it's like, like I said, yeah, you know, um, totally. Once you've got four articles on there, let's say four, then you can kind of figure out, oh, okay, right. So this would fit into this category and then that would fit into that category. Um, now that I've got four, which are completely different, but within the same genre, how, how, how do we, people navigate from one to the next how do they flow through the site what's the aim of it um oh damn i forgot to put a call to action like contact us today for a quote or something you know the thing is you need to start it you need to start it and see it and see how users navigate through to it um before you can really you know get to grips with anything yeah, I think, you know, it makes sense to be prepared. Of course, you need to think about all these things. But at the same time, you're always going to realize that you miss something when you start. Um, that's just human nature, I think. You know, that you, you can't just dream up the perfect thing and implement it straight away. There is always going to be a process of learning, trial and error, when you do these kind of things. So, you know, I think... It really makes sense to yeah be, be prepared and be flexible when you start. Be prepared to learn. Be on the lookout. Um, and you know adapt and adjust and amend your blog as needed. Um, but I think I think it I think it is a bit dangerous to be sucked into that idea of you have to get everything there in place from the beginning because i don't think you can not unless you have sort of a great big team of people working on it working from a really detailed business plan and even yeah. then even then we've all of us have seen i think you know pretty bad launches so hey i've still got two 
on my own little local blogs, which I use, that aren't even mobile friendly. <laughs> they, they're that old, and I haven't even, I can't be asked. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's, it's just... Because they're for me, they're, you know, they're my own little... That's the thing, is they're my own little thing, and I just, you know, they're totally local, it's just my ramblings. Um, and actually yeah. enough, even now, if if you actually, you know, if they are in the search results, and you click on it, Google does that wonderful thing with, um, un, you know, with... with desktop sites in on mobile is you just click that thing and it reformats the whole thing to fit your phone provided by google so yeah i can't even be asked to make my, my blog my oh, blog because google. Blog, google doesn't form <laughs> so yeah that goes back to like what is the purpose of the blog for me just my own personal ramblings don't really you care if they're SEO ready or not. Yeah, so do do your best. Get as much as you can, as much as you understand at the moment, ready. Um, and then learn as you go along. Um, get things right bit by bit. Um, if you try to do everything now, you won't ever launch. And the real thing that will make uh, a uh, make a difference to your to your blog is blog posts and lots of them. Um, so don't get caught up too much in the technicalities. Don't do anything silly, but um, don't spend two years uh, getting your uh, your blog. Um, one hundred percent SEO ready with everything you've read about, and don't spend two uh, and fail to spend those two years creating content. Cool. So, have we uh, done this to death? Have we um, covered everything? I'm going to record that as a yes. All right, I think when I click this button, um, yep, it is. That's thank you for watching time again. We've done it again. We've answered all of the questions asked on the uh, um, WCA Questions Facebook group. Uh, and I've done it again. I, I, I need to say um, we've reviewed the, the questions and answers given. Um, We'll be back at the same time next week to do this uh, all again. Um, but before I go, I must thank people like Michael Martinez, Perry Bernard, uh, uh, Brenda Malone, um, just so many people, Ammon Johns, uh, Richard Hearn. Um, and Richard, of course, uh, sometimes joins us uh, on our panel uh, um, for the uh, live recording. Um, and I must thank, uh, of course, you guys, uh, Tim Kappa, um, uh, <laughs> David Roseanne and Masataki Wasa. Um, yeah, um, without, without uh, you, um, this Damasio uh, uh, Questions uh, group would not be half as interesting. All right, let's... Um, Try and find the button to click to close this off. There we are.